Hello. Today I'm going to tie for you a sulfur nymph. Now I recently did a sulfur emerger and some of the materials were still laying out and I think they make a pretty good sulfur nymph as well. So we're going to give that a shot. We're going to use a fulling mill um, FM5085 in size 16. I'm going to use a feather from this partridge skin for the tailing material. I'm also going to use some of this mallard dyed wood duck and it uh, matches our sulfurs pretty well. We're going to use some rabbit fur for the thorax and hold it all together with a uh, perfect hatch 8 aught thread in pale done. So we'll get a hook in, it in the vise and wrap our way back. I'm going to stop here because as I did in the last video I'm going to hit that long tag end with the marker and I'm going to use that for my ribbing. I'm going to counter rib that wood duck. I don't know why I'm calling it that. It's mallard flank dyed wood duck. But I'm going to counter rib that and uh, that color brown is going to be kind of an offset and make a ribbing and look pretty good. So here's a bundle of those partridge fibers. And we'll get them tied in and wrap them forward. And I'm stopping at about the three quarter point. So there are the mallard fibers that are dyed wood duck, which I keep saying all different ways. But I'm going to use those. They're, they're a perfect kind of soft tannish orange color. And I think they work well for this pattern. So I have a little bundle of those. As I said in the last video, they're long fibers. I can't find much use for them other than wrapping this way, counter ribbing, and using them for bodies. Um, but they do really well. Now here I struggle a little bit with the old one finger whip finish. But we want to get something on there so that when I use the rotary feature, things don't come apart. So we'll get that bundle of fibers, kind of pull out the short ones. Kind of have to snip that ugly one out of there just so it doesn't get in the way. And we're going to counter wrap these. So I'm going to turn the vise away from me and wrap this toward me. And work my way forward. And if you feel it necessary, it's probably not a bad idea to um, wrap those fibers over some super glue or some head cement. I'm going to get a wrap or two over the top here. And I really want to do alternating wraps, but the camera and my hand and everything are in the way. So um, I gave up on that and just did a couple of wraps. You can see where they sprung loose a little bit here. So ideally, I wouldn't have a camera there and I'd be able to do those alternating wraps and just hold those, uh, would have been able to hold the short fibers toward me. But we got the job done. and It's not going to come loose. So another good place for a couple of whips. And we're going to use the rotary feature to add in the rib. So there's the long tag end. We'll get it free from the tail. And we want to space this out a little bit. We're going to let some of the fuzz from those mallard fibers um, show through. Uh, this kind of stands it up. And we'll get a wrap across there and a few more over the whole thing to kind of hold all that in place. And snip out the excess. There's the abdomen. I kind of like the way this works out. So there's that um, another mallard feather, the tip of one anyways, and I prepped it by notching it um, back a little bit, not take that V out of the center. So I'm fiddling with this a little bit. I want to get back on the stem to start. A couple turns over it, keep them loose, and I'm going to draw that back towards the tail until I get about what I think are the right length for legs. 
sticking out beyond the hook eye. I do other nymphs with a bundle of pheasant tail fibers for the legs and the wing case and use about this same technique as I'm using here. So I think you've kind of figured out that I'm going to fold the rest of that feather over for a wing case. In the meantime, this is some of that rabbit fur dubbing. I mixed a little yellow and a little orange to kind of soften the orange just a bit. Till it looked good to me anyways. And we'll get a couple inch noodle started. And it probably well, it isn't enough. You'll see that I add a little more to finish things up. And we want to go back to where that uh, wing case is going to be folded forward. Make sure we get a good solid wrap there. And a little more, uh, little more dubbing. And I think I've mentioned this before, but on the nymphs, we're after that, that kind of bullet shape. I don't necessarily want just a round ball up there. And the wing case is going to be just fine. Use the thumb to push back those uh, fibers. And I'm going to split them about half on each side. So I do the far ones first, pull the other ones out of the way, and I can get a wrap over them to hold them in place. And then we'll fold the ones on my side back, catch them with my thumb, and then a couple more wraps to hold everything down. And now I can fold the wing case back or forward I should say. Get a couple of wraps. I let it loose and then pull it back down when I have it where I like it. And I'm gonna throw a wrap or two. This is that alternating wrap thing, but the, the tight wrap around just behind the hook eye kind of holds everything in place. And we'll trim out all the excess. Careful not to cut the thread here. And cut them off as close as you uh, think you can get away with. Now, I may have rushed the head a little bit here. Everything's up kind of close to the front. The eyes stayed clear. That's that's the most important thing. But this doesn't end up being that perfectly smooth head that I would have liked. But all in all, it's not bad. And we'll get a whip finish here and kind of work around to get the shape the way we want it, work back to front, and throw that final wrap down around just behind the hook eye. And slice off the extra thread. Now here I got all excited, because I was going to also get out a marker, either a brown or a red marker, and color that head up. Eh, but I got to the... Uh, I skipped that step, and I kind of got to gluing everything up with uh, Sally Hansen's here. And we let that soak in and dry a little bit. That's what the uh, little fade out was, giving it a minute to dry. And I'll brush out some of that dubbing. And if you look close between this and the final shot, I did put on another coat of Sally Hansen's to give it a little more shine. But this is the finished fly. And I think it'll catch fish. I got to use some of those materials and it matches the sulfurs in our area. Size-wise, it might be a little on the large size, but match the bugs in your area. And uh, if you hung in there till the end and you want to learn more about me, look me up on Amazon. Until next time, be safe.